Well, it's not the beginning of March, is it? <laughs> it's way further into March than I plan to do this video. But here we are. It's been puppy madness over here. We've had a puppy for a week. The two weeks before that, we had the sister of the puppy that we have now. We were watching her for my brother who had to have an emergency surgery that turned out to be a cancer that seems to be contained. It's been a roller coaster. So YouTube has not been a priority, but fidgets have definitely been getting me through, through any of these hard times. Uh, this guy has been one of my first things that I've grabbed for sure. This is my custom wrapped. It's a super stepped inlay, whoa, super stepped inlay model. It's got a machine finish zirconium body. It's got a twist Sakmar Makume inlay that's been lightly etched. It's got a bit of a patina that's set up on it overnight. I haven't really played with it too much this morning. Been doing lots of puppy play today since it's the weekend. Man, this thing's been, I mean, it's amazing. It's my favorite wrapped. It's personalized on the side with some laser engraving. It says, fuck crones. Got some symbols that mean some things to me. Yeah. I love this thing. Plates are worn in incredibly well. I've got it set up with the aluminum three click hybrid inserts and the foam dampeners. So it is not a crunchy wrapped. Speaking of crunchy wraps, I'll just bring out my V1.1 Sphera. You can hear the difference, right? Many of you know that the Wrapped is my favorite if you've been around for a while. This is something that I will have until I die. This is like a, I mean, it's, it's personalized. I don't have many things that are <laughs> personalized on purpose that I've bought for myself. So this is a special one. This one. This one's also very special. It's like an OG. It's got some 3D printed hybrid inserts. So different than you could get when the V1 first came out. You know, hybrid inserts meaning the insert or the magnets are larger in the corners than they are in the middle. So it really makes the, the flippy stuff, makes it hang on, you know, really well. The Wrapped is an amazing, well thought out design of a slider that does sliding very good without any, well, it's, I was gonna say without any tricks, but it's, I guess it's not really a trick whenever you have a good plate design. It's amazing how different these two feel. These plates are nowhere near as worn in as these plates are. You can just maybe see the different wear patterns. Very, very worn versus, I mean, you can still see and feel basically all the little ridges here versus they gone in these areas. All right, anyways, the Wrapped is amazing. It has definitely been with me through a lot of the hard times and stressful times over the last several weeks. Uh, we'll let these wraps hang out together, but not fully together because magnets. Which way? There we go. Some opposition there. Another favorite. The LIC EDC Tungsten Edamame with some crystallized Zerkutai buttons that I made for it. Some big old thick boys. I don't even know what they end up measuring. This thing is like 145 grams or something of a spinner, the body alone, and then the buttons make it weigh like 175 or 180 or something. I recently stonewashed it. Not stonewashed, it's, I use a ceramic media with uh, grit, so. Not necessarily stone, but it was tumbled for uh, like a day and a half. I think I did 37 hours. So you can kind of see this little glittery, kind of scratchy pattern on it. And that was a, almost a week ago, I think. And it's starting to, the, the tungsten is starting to darken and patina again. It definitely, this alloy of tungsten in particular seems to darken up a good bit from, you know, skin contact, from the oils and sweats on your skin, humidity and that kind of stuff. So, and in the process of having to tumble it, I've got to take the bearing out. And I didn't think it was possible, but in my small little stash of bearings that I still find acceptable, 
I found one that was better than the one that I had in it for, I mean, the last seven months or something. Uh, six months? I don't even know how long I've had this thing. It sounds about right. I mean, I found a good one and kept it in there, but this one is even better. It's faster. Its rate of decline is very, very slow. So I've been reaching for this thing a lot now that it's got this finish on here because well, this finish and this bearing and these buttons really just kind of took this thing up a level and I can just spin it so dang fast. It spins for so long. It makes such a cool noise. And the buttons are so comfortable. It's just incredible. I love it. Amazing spinner. I get why there are only so few, because, I mean, it was the first one and it's expensive to make and all of the things, yada, yada, they're hard to get. Anyone that does have them, covets them, you know, say whatever you want, but it's it's amazing. And I, But I do wish there were more of them available for people to experience in the world. <laughs> all right, another one that I, I have probably reached for this more than anything since I guess maybe in the last three weeks or since my last collection video, I should say. Um, this is my titanium top B. It's got a, the stainless steel click plate, tungsten carbide balls, the piano wire springs inside, and the center block that you know holds the click plate to this body is made of Ultim. So it makes the sound levels really good on the tungsten carbide balls on the stainless plate, but then whenever you click to the end, the Ultim hitting the steel plate basically matches the pitch. Uh, anyways, it doesn't hurt my ears. Whenever it's a stainless block on the stainless plate, it's too loud. With that out of the way, <laughs> oh man, that was, a, that was a ramble there talking about the internals. Maybe some of you guys will take some value from that. <laughs> The top B is a very simple mechanism. Yes, you have four clicks. So it's very simple. It does not take any brain power. It doesn't do very much. I am aware of all of these things. But whenever it's tuned right, the quality of the clicks and the quality of the slide makes it a excellent fidget. And when I just say a fidget, I mean, it is a fidget. This is not a skill toy. This is kind of a skill toy, you know what I mean? Like, people have to ask me, how do you do that move? So it takes practice, you have to do, you know, you have to put in the work and develop the skills to do tricks, so to say. This, you don't do that. It's a fidget. It goes up and down, back and forth. You hand it to anyone, they can do it. It's like popping bubble wrap or something. Like there's a difference in a skill toy and a fidget. Like when I'm driving, I don't want to play with a wrap or a spinner. Like a spinner is too interactive. You know, I like to, I'm taking it way off camera here, putting it up by my head and then throwing it down. Like it's a very interactive thing for me. So driving, for just for an example, like I don't fidget all the time, like when I'm driving, but like if it's a long car ride, you know, I'll grab the top B because I can do that. It's very simple to keep in your lap. You can put it on, you, you know, you can still have your hand on the wheel, so to say, you're still like be on the shifter, you know, it's hands-free and doesn't take much to do. I mean, if you're gonna get fancy, this is about as fancy as you can get with it. Like, or roll it over, I don't, I don't know. Anything else would just be ridiculous. Get something different for, for what you're wanting to do, right? It's a fidget. Like, how, how else do I say it? The quality of the fidget, of the fidgeting that you get from this fidget is top tier. Uh, and that's, there's multiple. Like, you can set them up in a lot of different ways. Here's my stainless one. It has the peak plate, so it's a type of plastic versus stainless steel. This is talking about the type of clicks you can get. You know, we got three clicks here versus the zipper plate with clicks on the end. So you can change these things up a lot. Like, quick example. I've got this whole box full of springs, balls, different plates. Oh, here's another one of my Ultim center blocks, just to show you what the center block is. 
you're not aware of what's inside here. So it's like this. You can see the plate a little bit there. You can see that plate. This goes in and sandwiches, holds this in like that to this piece with these two screws. So maybe that helps you follow. So if whenever this is a steel block on a steel plate, that end hit is really loud. So I really like to change it up between metal and plastic. So this one's got the peak plastic plate with the metal center block. Metal plate, plastic center block. Anyways, they're, they're just, it's a great fidget and you can set them up to do different things because of the different plates and the tunability of the springs and the balls. So these have really helped me through the last couple weeks a lot. I can pick them up, I can use them very discreetly, mindlessly, you know, stem a little bit, so to say. I mean, I'm doing it right now. They're so good. Like, they're just a great fidget. I can just, I can move out and get it out of my hands, you know? <laughs> and it doesn't take any skill. So it's just so well executed. I, I absolutely love the Top B. That's why I have two of them. Like, it's nice to have the titanium and the stainless steel and to have them set up so differently. And I love the asymmetric, you know, little finger groove here. We got only one face and then the cool kind of geometric pattern. It looks really great on this one because it used to be polished and then I tumbled it in a media that didn't get down in the grooves here. So you've got that two-tone finish. This one was already tumbled and then I tumbled it again and darkened it up even more. So it doesn't quite have that same, same effect, but it's great. Uh, why I like this one also so much. Happens to be my favorite of the top Bs being titanium and the haptics you get out of it. But it's also number 119. My birthday is 1109. I don't know. So I think that's kind of cool. One of the reasons I I had two of these at one point. I had a n different one before. It was like number 700 or 600 or something. So yeah, anyways. I like having the two. This particular design of the Top B series is really cool. They have lots of different designs and whatever. Speaking of designs that are different, here is the bubble of the Top B series. So you've got the frowny faces, the bubbles on the backside, and you can see it is curved. Concave here, convex here. The Top Bs are flat. Um, I honestly like the flat more. The only reason I have this one is because it is made of tungsten. So it is very, very heavy for, you know, its size. Let's just pull out the scale here. Someone asked on the video of this thing before about weights. So just to give perspective, you know, like these are the same size objects. This one maybe is a little thicker. So we've got 123 grams. It was 128 whenever I had the steel click plate. I changed it over to the plastic one. This one's 38 grams, <laughs> and this one is 53. So even these two together do not total up. We need we would need another titanium one, basically, right? 37, 91, close enough. <laughs> we would need another titanium one to total out how much this weighs. So I know it's hard to convey on camera. That particular novelty is why I have still held on to it for this last I think I've had it almost a month that and the fact that it's serial number one uh, that's just kind of neat too that's just by like that just happened I didn't really seek that out um I like the tune that I have in it it's got very stiff springs it's got the peak click plate with a steel center block tungsten carbide balls stiff springs I mean, it feels good, but aesthetically, said that funny. I don't like anywhere near as much as these two. It's just cool that it's tungsten. I mean, and it's got a good feel to it. It's like, I've been picking it up and I've been using it a lot and I still love that novelty of how heavy it is for what it is. It also gets a little tiring to hold and use sometimes. That's a value of the titanium one being so lightweight. Um, I can really use it non-stop all day and just kind of keep on rocking you know 
yeah wow what a ramble on the top bees let's see things that keep on that i've just loved lately my flux this is a titanium body with tungsten weights the ball weights and then tungsten buttons that i made for it uh, a week or so ago cami sent me a half finished stainless button that i thought was tungsten so one day i made a matching tungsten one tumbled them took it out of the tumbler and realized they looked very different and was like wait wait and then i went back and read our messages and realized that it was a single stainless button and that i had only just made one tungsten button it was kind of funny uh, anyways the next day i came in made another tungsten button and now i have a full tungsten uh flux well titanium body but man i, was just, I thought it was funny that i was so excited that i only had to make one basically and then i had a half finished tungsten one that yeah <laughs> almost 150 grams like you're so close it's an awesome spinner now this bearing is like one of the older fz essentials uh like golden day bearings the i think it's like the hc3 it's the ceramic balls and crown cage here let's just take a peek at it you can see my stamping on the buttons too <laughs> number 65 you can see the ceramic balls and the crown cage yeah this on this way little dit stamp there i was worried about my uh hardened steel stamps that i might damage them but they were fine this thing is a ripper now with these wider um grips on it before i had the other grips you know these are much thinner i never had thick grips that match the width of the balls so i couldn't table spin my ball fluxes before i just saw a kovu here Oh, got it. Man, they're everywhere right now. What is up with that? I cleaned up before this for this very reason. See, this thing just cruises. That bearing is awesome. Like, these two bearings right here are probably my best in the box right now. Uh, I'll talk about this while I got it out. This one's got the brass body and titanium buttons and weights. These are the, the bead weights. You know, and they got the balls here. These just unscrew... You can swap them on and off, change them around. The balls just have threads inside and screw right on to the same spot. So it's a modular spinner. I really need to make some of my own weights for it at some point. I think that'd be really cool. This one's very fast and lightweight, being all titanium. Don't carry it too, too much, but I'm really addicted to this thing right now. Oh, feels like I might've got something in the bearing. Maybe it'll kick it out. Kicked it out, nice. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. <laughs> so I'll hold that guy right there. We'll put the other flux with it. We're talking about spin designs by Cami, I guess. Cami, hello friend. Fuse number 69. So this is like the solid body ball flux, right? It's got the little bit of indents solid body and it's got the holes for you know a little more performance you could say it's got the milled out pockets that have the little diamond pattern with all kinds of grip that is still comfortable this is like my favorite spinner design that there is it fits my hand perfect the ergonomics are all there the moment of inertia is like it's great it feels really good it's just made in copper. That's the only pitfall. If this was made in tungsten, like game over, everyone else stop making spinners. The bar has been set and that's it. Like, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Ergonomics are just perfect. Maybe like a Fuse XL someday could be something that took like 22 millimeter buttons. So it just like grew up a little. Maybe. That was just a dream I had the other day. A daydream. <laughs> but a tungsten fuse. Mm, 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 mm. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Favorite spinners up there for sure. Also been picking up my tungsten Ameriless a lot. Go figure. This one is 
Well, it's been around a lot. It's got some damage on it. It's one of the oldest pieces in my collection here. Haven't tumbled it yet. It's just been, it's got a big patina, <laughs> big patina, heavy patina on it because I don't ever polish it. It's just a machine finish. Got a full ceramic bearing in it. You can see these buttons, maybe on the back side here, you can see the ruby peeking through. Um, I modified these buttons. They were the flat two EDC triangle buttons. So there was no, you know, dish surface here. So I machined it out and, you know, on my lathe and miscalculated a little bit, got a little greedy on how deep I wanted the dish and exposed that thread bore. So then I bored that hole to so the proper size in the dish and press fit in some rubies. It's a nice little contact point. It's not the first time I had done it. First time I had done it was on these as it was also an accident. I went too deep and I was like, hmm, oh, well, let's plug the hole. And I mean, yeah, it feels really cool to have it right there in the center. Some other makers have done that in the past, not in the center, but more around the, you know, like the outer diameter of the button or something. That's a little bit out of my capability, I think, but still, you know, it wasn't an original idea for me to put a bearing in a button face. That really does give a great point to, you know, just contact your finger and gives you a little bit of extra security, so to say. Uh, the Amerilis is an incredible tri spinner. Like it's probably, I think it's still my favorite tri spinner I've ever tried. The size and weight distribution is excellent. Having, you know, those three machine pockets under the button, like makes it have a really good weight distribution. It's extremely comfortable. It's very fast. The button design, um, I guess my button design helps them quite a lot. The original buttons are not quite as secure and kind of have like the, these slippery polished grooves. So I do think having a deep dish button like this really can change the mirrorless a lot and really helps it. Um, makes it, I mean, it's my, it's my favorite tri spinner. Maybe one of my favorite, I mean, it's my, one of my favorite spinners ever. I would even like a second one that is in mint condition because this one's got some, it's got some damage. It looks like it has been dropped on some kind of really hard flat surface at some point. Right there, there's like a little dent. It wasn't a rough surface. It was just a really hard flat surface because it's got like a little dings in it. I don't even care because it is probably my most balanced spinner. Um, like, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't move at all. It's great. Is that enough gushing over the Amerilis? It's, you guys have heard me talk about it a lot if you're still here. <laughs> if you've watched my stuff this much. Another spinner that I've used it a lot is the Focusworks Axis Micro Mini. This one is also made in tungsten. It has tungsten carbide balls on the end and some crystallized Zerkutai buttons that I made for it. I recently have been swapping bearings in it, playing with different ones. I had like a... Uh, one of the white ceramic bearings in it for a while. It was okay. This one is... I don't even know what it came out of anymore, to be honest. Some spinner that I had in the past, it's got the silicone um, nitride balls, the black ceramic balls, and a ribbon cage. So there's that. <laughs> it's a very fast spinner with this particular bearing in it. <laughs> Holding it out of frame but it's not perfectly balanced. So it's made it a little bit hard to love for me because I do love the Axis Micro Mini. I've had one in the past, but it was uh, it was perfectly balanced. This one does have just like a little bit of like a, well, a little imbalance to it. I can just feel it in my fingertip. I can't necessarily see it. I tried, that's one reason I was swapping all the bearings on it. Um, enough complaining. I still do love this thing a lot. It's such a good size and weight that it's extremely fast, but because it's made of tungsten, it has satisfying inertia. So the fact that you're able to get it so fast and it does have that inertia behind it, it is very, very satisfying to flick and use. Like a titanium spinner, yes, it can be very fast. But when you go to stop it, it just doesn't have that inertia, even if it's spinning really, really fast. So this has a really good sweet spot there that you are you can really get it moving and be satisfied by the inertia that it provides. It's um, It's got a lot of power that it holds in there. 
and these buttons are very very grippy the whenever you etch and flame them like this these are high heat flamed after etching these are only flamed and then etched so there's no none of the high heat and not etched as long either there's like a hear that right there's like there's a texture here between the different layers so it really adds a lot of soft grip that definitely doesn't hurt your finger at all to hold on to or your skin at all but it's just something that your skin grabs really well because it's got a slight bit of roughness so i've been carrying that a lot I haven't been carrying this a whole lot so it's like outcast it a little bit all this other stuff i don't really carry that much either i just got them out because i was talking about them but all this stuff over here, this has been in the EDC for weeks now. So is the Puffer Crash. Low energy fidget. Again, talking about pure fidgets, not skill toys. Let's flip this over the cool side. This is a fidget, not a skill toy. It's infinite bubble wrap. If you want a skill toy, not for you. This takes no skill takes even less skill than that. You can't even really flip it around and do cool tricks with it because it's just little buttons you click and you get tactile feedback on, I guess, in your ears and on your skin. It's excellent. Puffer crash, man. I wish there were more of these and I wish they were more affordable because the secondary market is silly on them. sitting here blabbing so much this is the most i've talked in a minute that hasn't been to a puppy <laughs> so I'm, I'm getting out of breath not out of breath i'm getting a dry throat losing my mind here the puffer crash really is it's really good i don't know they came out with the newer ones like the beetle crash and the strawberry crash but consensus seems to be that puffer crash still wins because you have opposing buttons and they're not at some like angle you know yeah top tier fidget for sure just i mean it, it's top tier one of the best all this stuff up here is incredible i'm indifferent here it's incredible but it's kind of ugly <laughs> uh incredible let's go about let's talk about the copper infused vert so I've had this for almost a month now too. Anthony from Cladis 3D Studios sent this to me uh, just to review along with a little mini vert. Get in my drawer here. One of the spinners. And I think there was also a green vert, uh, like the mini vert slider. I gave that to my brother, the one who just had the surgery. He, uh, I just handed it to him one day whenever I was paying him a visit and he was like, oh, this makes a cool noise. And I was like, keep it, please keep it. I love giving fidgets to people. So, I mean, that one was given to me and get to re-gift it. So Anthony, I guess, thank you for being able to give my brother something whenever he's down. Uh, so I, yeah, copper infused work is really good. I almost gave him this one, but like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I was still kind of in the honeymoon phase with it and I still do use it a lot. And I'm wanting to test these plates and see how they really do a lot of slide time on it and i don't know if you would call it i don't think there is any wear at all like they look exactly like they did when i got them like whatever this stuff is it really holds up um i haven't dropped it or anything like i have been careful with it so i want to treat it well it's just uh it, it functions really good I watched Melanie over at EDC Fidget. I watched her review and she was talking about how it does have a bit of like a, a rough kind of feel. And it does have like a, okay, when you're just moving like this, not necessarily jumping the magnets, you can feel like a squeaking kind of like uh, grabby feel. I don't know how to put it, but it, it, it almost works to its advantage because it helps it lock in place in the places it's supposed to lock and it's not too hard to overcome i don't know if that makes sense but it does slide very good and locks into all the positions that it's supposed to lock into so it's a it's a great slider i really like it if you're on a budget just get one of these 
you don't want to spend a hundred bucks, like, yeah, get, get one of these. I'm not really sure of any, I don't know. It's because of the, the weight and the copper and all that being a printed slider. It is just, it's epic. It, it doesn't cost that much and it's not just plastic. It does have kind of like that dried clay feel like on the edges here, the more dark looking areas that kind of look like clay, you know, but not, not really. Like it, it feels, it, it feels interesting for sure. <laughs> Very solid though. What else can I say about it? I don't know. That's it. This thing my wife has still been playing with quite a lot. I just stole it the other day because it was in my hand when I was in the house and somehow it made it out here to the shop with me. I needed to give it back to her. So I'm going to leave it up here. <laughs> this little spinner. Been keeping it out here in the shop. The buttons are actually pretty sweet. Lots of grip. Would recommend those. Let's talk about my actual collection though. This one stays in my collection box for sure. Getting down to just a few things here. Let me go ahead and pull them out because I don't think I'm going to have a ton to say about these last things that, because these are the ones that I haven't used a ton lately. They're ones that I still really like, but I don't know why I haven't picked them up that much. So, I mean, that's it. Yeah. Box is empty. I do have these buttons that I need to toss in the tumbler. I finished these up the other day several sets here these are some really thin titanium buttons with a deep dish so you have a very narrow pinch width you're like basically holding the bearing you know so those are those are kind of cool unique design here that i've never done before they're thin buttons that are very rounded on the edges with a very deep dish so in the same way you're basically holding the bearing like you're you're pinching the bearing and then in this tight dish, I did, uh, I think there's like, I don't know, I didn't count them, I think seven grooves or something that are spaced a hundred thousandths apart, uh, perfectly, you know, evenly all the way around. I expect to see more of these because these are so grippy and so comfortable. Like these are top tier grip security buttons. I love them. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna tumble all of those for a little longer Man, I'm getting off track here. That's okay. I'm clearing out the box. And I also made these. These are also titanium. Have some little thicker buttons with some chamfers. Uh, I think I'm going to tumble them for a little longer, too. Everything could have gone for, yeah, just a little longer. I think it looked better. I got impatient last night. I don't want to see how these look after a little bit. They got that same effect going on that this uh, stainless bubble got. You can see how the, or top B, you can see how the deeper groove stayed silver. The higher bits turn gray. Yeah. Love how that particular media interacts with things like that. So back to these fidgets. The tungsten squid. Amazing fidget. Something I don't think I will want to sell. Because I do appreciate it very much. It's very enjoyable. It's very pretty. Spins re really, really well. I do wish it was perfectly balanced. It does not pass the lift test. This bearing might be a little dirty. It's looking like it wants to rotate, but then it's stopping. So it's not going to show you, but I can feel it when it's spinning. It's just got the slightest bit of imbalance, but it's very comfortable. Sometimes I can most, okay. Let's say most of the time I can get a really good, fast, strong rip on it. Whenever I hold it just right and move my hand just right and my hands aren't super sweaty. My hands are not really sweaty right now. I got that nice kind of, I don't know, it's like a tacky feel on my skin right now. It's like max, like, I don't know, max efficiency for spinning. <laughs> I actually really enjoy using spinners when my hands feel this way. This one also has a full ceramic bearing in it. I definitely like the full silicon nitride nine ball ceramic bearings with the tight tolerances in my full tungsten spinners. They're just, they make the coolest noise. They're not too dead sounding. Um, this one's a little dead sounding, but it spins so perfectly that bearing that I appreciate that about it. This, this one of my full ceramics is Definitely not the freest spinning, longest spinning one. Looks like there's some debris under my button here. What is that? 
Is that like chocolate chip cookie? <laughs> I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, so if there's something under the button right there, there's probably some, some dirt in this bearing. It definitely needs some needs some maintenance. I'm not going to do that in this video, though. It's already drug out to be a pretty long one. Longer than I thought it would have been with how small my collection has gotten. Yeah, the squid is great. It's just one that I don't really carry very much because it is quite heavy. It's, I guess, with how everything is set up here, that tungsten edamame is heavier with tungsten buttons on it. It, like, gets up to 200 and something grams, maybe, like, 220. Um, definitely heavy, but this thing is, like, 190 grams, I think. Let's just, let's just pull it out. Why not? Uh, can you see the number? I can see the number. Yeah, 188. So it's a, uh, it's definitely my heaviest spinner on in the collection right now, with how everything is set up. And if I really want to carry a heavy spinner, I want to carry the edamame usually. And if I want to carry a tri spinner, I want to pick the Ameriless or the Axis Micro if weights or space is of concern. So the squid does just kind of fall to the wayside because it, these two do it's their try things better. But this thing is so beautiful and I love it. It, it stays in the collection, you know. The uh, Stainless Steel Alphabot Industries Valkyrie. Put some more buttons that I made for it. And it's got a pretty cool golden eagle bearing that a viewer, Terrence, sent me. Terrence, thank you. I think about you every time I spin this spinner because of that. It's a lovely bearing in this particular spinner. It's very free spinning. I was sitting here talking about free spinning bearings with these and this. This thing's right there with them. It just chugs and it doesn't weigh anything. It's a very, very lightweight spinner. But it spins so fast and so it's like so smoothly with this bearing. It's lovely. Not one I ever really want to carry. It's not like that flashy or showy, but it's not ever one I think I'm ever going to sell either because it's so inexpensive and really not replaceable. So like why I get rid of it, you know what I mean? Uh, because it's so good. The top C, this one is in the blasted zirconium. I love this thing too. And I have been picking it up around the house, like when I've just been chilling on the couch or something and watching the puppy. It's definitely more of a mindless fidget. But for some reason, the top bees have called to me more over recent months. I mean, so much so that this is the only top C that I have. I sold the Makume one. I don't know if I did that since the last video or not. Maybe I have. Maybe some of you are shocked. It was my number one for so long because I love Makume. But at the end of the day, whenever it came down to the fidgets and how they feel and how much I was using them and not having so much redundancy in my collection, the zirconium one was, I mean, the winner. I, I narrowed it down to this one. Uh, yeah, and it, it was an easy choice to sell them all and kind of allocate the money to other parts of my life. I felt great about it. I don't have a second one like I do necessarily with these two set up with two different plates and two different feels maybe I'll get there with the top B I'm not sure but I do like how they feel so different with their plates but I don't like the top C with the plate with less clicks so I just like the ZZ plate so that's kind of why I just have the one because I don't necessarily want two different feels out of the top C there aren't two feels that I like I just like the one I like the ZZ plate <laughs> Uh, the Blasted Zerk has great grip and great sound. The older ones, too, seem to have a tighter tolerance between the body and the top disc. There's less, you know, if you're holding the body securely, not touching the top disc, and then you push down side to side, so like the rock around this center pivot pin, it's tighter on the older models that look like this versus the ones with like the superconductor or the ones with the, the frowny faces, kind of like the the tungsten bubble over here. Um, so it's just, I don't know. After having all of them, this one is, well, I mean, it's one of my favorites. Gonna stay around forever too. And yeah, it is. 
Lastly, stainless steel torque bar with some zirconium buttons that I had made that fit. Well, they were originally for the Thinema thing. You know, they're very tight fitting. But I don't have a Thinema thing anymore. And they fit the torque bar great. This is a gifted torque bar to me. Kind of the OG. It's got a full ceramic bearing in it right now that I desperately need to change out because it, it does not feel good right now it feels very dirty and very slow spinning let's let's get this button back on and let's try to give it a slow spin and show you well i mean it doesn't seem terrible but it's not catching anywhere but it doesn't feel good it feels very rough for a well a good ceramic bearing I mean, yeah, there's definitely, it's like catching. I can feel it like. I don't know if you could hear it over the AC unit and the refrigerator that just kicked on. It's a very quiet noise, but it's definitely catching. So I need to swap that guy out. But anyways, the torque bar is, you know, it's the OG spinner. It, it's like, if you have spinners and like spinners, you like almost have to have a torque bar just to like pay respects because it's still so good i'm actually i don't want to jinx it but i'm next up for a custom like i have a custom spot from 2016 or 17 or whenever it was you know pretty not that far on the list you know so it's uh it's gonna be cool i'm gonna have it made with tungsten and makume i think Tungsten body, you know, like this, the thin body, and then Makume weight. So it'll have the same profile as this. No holes on the end, I don't think. And Makume uh, buttons. And probably some trits somewhere. I just do like one here and in the middle of each weight or something, depending on how the patterns come out. If the pattern's too beautiful, I might not want to interrupt it. So maybe we could like do some trits on the side of the body or something. I don't know. I've been thinking about it. Uh, oh, not lastly, Gambit Coin from Billet Spin, designed by Rich Stadler, original design. This little inner coin here, he made it as a fidget or a golf ball marker. So it just clicks in. There's different bodies that you can get, and there's different inner coins that you can get. It's held in with this compression spring and this concave groove that goes around the disc here. So it goes in, and then you just clicks in and you know it's not coming out so you can just kind of do stuff like this there's some bodies that have this bearing on the other side so it can spin you know like a top or a coin several different kinds i like the the convex one here just because it feels better in hand and i made this raindrop makume inner disc for it special to me because Rich is a very special person to me, a great friend. Um, yeah. So that's my collection, guys. It's definitely slimmed down a lot. I'm trying to think, what have I, what else have I sold? Quite a, I feel like I sold a good bit of things. I don't know. I can't even remember at this point. The puppy madness has got my brain turned to mush. The only thing I have inbound that should be here next week is a tungsten obsidian spinner you know i just did a video on one of those but i got one myself coming in the mail so that's gonna be cool guess i'm gonna load up my box here i'm not gonna my bearing stuff is actually in the house so i can't change the torque bar bearing here on camera put that back in put this back in i'm literally putting stuff back in that i know i just don't even want to like play with right now these I don't I'm not in a slider mood even definitely not in a crunchy slider mood that's like a small time of day for me axis I don't want to mess with that was actually a really satisfying spin though let's see actually, that feels really good <laughs> mirrorless feels really good tungsten bubble I don't know kind of but every time I pick it up, I just think about selling it because like I paid three hundred fifty dollars for this thing, and I'm like, is it really three hundred fifty dollars good? Like, 
I know that doesn't make any sense, but you know what I'm saying. Like, grammatically, it doesn't make sense. But that's like, well, my brain go burr whenever I pick it up. And I'm not sure it is $350 worth of goodness. I did stone wash it for like 40 something hours. And it, it helps the grip and it helps the look. But I still, I'm just, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. I pick up these way more and enjoy them more. And I could buy like, I mean, both of these were under $80, I think. They were like 50 something and like 70 something. So, I mean, they're just incredible fidgets to me in that aspect. Puffer Crash, eh, you know. That feels really good right now. I really do like that. I haven't picked up some of these spinners since the beginning of the video. Something I do want to do on these, I think I got a little greedy on my dish depth here. So it's almost like it comes up onto kind of a wall on the edge. and Like on the edge of the bowl, you could say. And it's almost a bit of a... See that? You see that ring that's forming? It's forming just a slight hot spot. So I think I want to change the dish depth. Maybe make it a little shallower and open up this radius to be a little bit wider so it's easier on my finger. A little bit of extra work, but it'll be worth it. The fuse. Oh man, such a lovely, lovely spinner. Edamame. Yeah, this current combo, stone washing, crystallized zirkutai, thick deep dish buttons and this particular full ceramic bearing it's sublime it literally gives me all kinds of happy feel good endorphins <laughs> like this is like overload right here lately basically you just give me these two and I'm going to be pretty happy maybe throw this into the mix three very different things I don't ever just pick three but like I'd pick these three right now out of everything else in my box it'd be really hard to leave behind like the Amerilis and the flux or the fuse but man yeah these three are top tier fidgets guys skill toy fidget 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 grail spinner fidget fidget spinner what started the whole fidget thing you could say and what started the whole fidget thing we're gonna close out on this actually the oldest toys known to man spinning tops some of the first fidgets give this a rip and we're done I'm gonna put these in the tumbler two different tumblers Cool, guys. Thanks for watching. See you.